Before the days of radio and television, one vehicle of advertising was the calliope. People would hear the loud, high-pitched sound of the mini pipe organ and come from great distances to see what all the racket was about. Dave Miner of Donaldson knows a lot about calliopes, but as you're about to find out, he has more than a one-track mind. Dave Miner of rural Donaldson makes calliopes for a living. Calliopes that he sells all over the world. Well, as far as I know, we're the only uh, commercial venture uh, in the world today making real brass whistle air calliopes. There's been any number of people uh, over the years that have made one for themselves or a couple for others. Uh, but uh, we're about it, and that's good because there isn't a lot of market uh, there. Dave wasn't always in the business of making and selling calliopes. Up until 1984, he was in the computer service and installation business. The idea for the business came from my dad, who built a calliope when he retired. And in talking to him, I decided there had to be a market. And uh, against his uh, better wishes, I, I quit my job and moved back and went into business. In his first year of business, Dave built, by himself, 11 calliopes. Since then, he figures minor manufacturing has built and sold somewhere around 200 Tangley Calliophones. The Tangley Calliophone was made in Muscatine, Iowa in the 1920s, and that was the most popular calliope ever built. They probably made 1,500 to 2,000 Tangley Calliophones. That was their registered trademark. Uh, those uh, trademarks were abandoned when they went out of business in the 1930s. And uh, I picked those up, and those are registered trademarks of minor manufacturing now. Today, Dave's primary job is taking care of customers, whether it's selling or shipping to them. Another employee takes care of the hands-on production of calliopes, from the building of the keyboards to the tuning of the whistles. Other employees are hired as needed to work on some of minor manufacturing's other products, like popcorn wagons. This Model T popcorn body is a custom body for a man in Michigan with a special Model T truck chassis. He's got a tandem axle chassis and he owns a chain of grocery stores so he'll use his popcorn truck in conjunction with his grocery stores for promotions. Has all beveled safety glass, has the uh, perforated metal roof like the, uh, a lot of the trucks did and uh, we make it all from scratch here. The other body to the rear is our standard body Dave has a catalog of 12 items that minor manufacturing either manufactures or sells. One of their more unusual products is this auto accordion phone. This is not a, uh, a reproduction of an old instrument. This is an entirely new machine. Uh, a man developed this uh, several years ago, and uh, I bought his business out and uh, redesigned it and refined it, and this is what we ended up with. Well, what Dave does for a living is interesting enough, Dave's hobby is equally interesting. He collects trains. This locomotive is a Davenport diesel mechanical. It was made by the Davenport Locomotive Works in Davenport, Iowa. Trains a lot bigger than those you might find running around the Christmas tree. Uh, this one uh, is one of the first pieces of rolling stock I got, and the first locomotive uh, it came from down there in New Orleans, Louisiana, where it had worked a sugar plantation. It was originally narrow gauge. Really big trains. This crane was built in 1939. It's known as a locomotive crane. It's powered by steam, probably one of uh, only a handful that still operate on steam anywhere in the country. Uh, we so when Dave back. isn't taking care of business, you can find him, and please excuse us for stating the obvious, working on the railroad all the live long day. Well, this is uh, just a hobby out of control. Uh, that's what I always tell people. But uh, I tend to look at it one spike or one brick at a time. And when I'm driving that spike or laying that brick, that's what I'm concerned with right at the moment. And if you, if you look either too far ahead or look too far behind and look at the whole picture, then it becomes overwhelming. So uh, I just enjoy doing it. So uh, that's, that's why it's here. Like model railroaders who collect trains of a smaller scale, Dave felt in order to really enjoy his trains, he needed a town for them to run through. Thus was born the town of Minerville. Presently, Minerville consists of a depot. 
The depot is patterned after the, uh, the depots on this line, the Chicago Burlington Quincy depots. A school. This was the last surviving uh, complete building from the town site of Ely. A garage. No electricity. These were the first type of gasoline pumps. Prior to this, uh, gasoline came in five gallon square cans. Normally by the and road. a mile of track that runs through 15 acres. So over the period of several years, I've uh, regraded it, laid the ties and rails, and now the Fort Madison, Farmington and Western is back in operation. All aboard! To help support his hobby, Dave has opened his town to the public. Local residents dressed in period costumes volunteer to work on the railroad so that visitors to Minerville are treated to a step back in time. I get a lot of enjoyment and satisfaction out of seeing people come and enjoy themselves. Um, you know, when I see somebody uh, have a memory uh, rekindled because of something they've seen here, that means a lot. And it also means a lot that there's several generations that haven't experienced any of this. And this is real hands-on history. But more important to them than that is it's fun. And uh, that's, I guess that's my, my big goal. It's, it's a self-satisfying thing because I enjoy doing it. But it's also satisfying to see other people enjoying themselves. Once I want to do something, then I just do it. There really isn't any reason why anybody can't do anything if you just put your mind to it. It takes a lot of hard work, and I always tell people, you don't have to be nuts, but it helps. <laughs>